Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another episode of my Projectionist Vlog. My name is Eve. Thank you very much for tuning in. And today's episode, I will be talking about uh, playing James Bond movies, specifically Daniel Craig James Bond movies on 35mm IMAX and digital um, throughout, uh, within my 20 years in the movie theater experience. So, um, tomorrow, or tonight is kind of like the world premiere in America for No Time to Die. The movie's already been out overseas. They had the premiere in London. I think it's it's playing in India. Uh, unfortunately, there are YouTube videos, clips from the movie uh, on YouTube uh, from Indian audiences. They've been filming the end and everything. So, uh, so try to avoid that. But uh, yeah, this is Daniel Craig's last James Bond movie uh it's one of the most highly anticipated movies uh since april of 2020 or since before the pandemic when all the trailers were coming out um and then the you know the pandemic hit and the movie just got held back and held back and held back and now it's coming out finally in 2021 october it's such a weird time to release a bond movie um you know november was always the month to release Bond movies since uh, GoldenEye came out. You know, there was always talk of, you know, Quantum of Solace was supposed to come out in May of 2008, and um, this movie, No Time to Die, that's coming out, this was going to be in April, <laughs> uh, but then they moved it to November 2020, and then they moved it to April 21, and then they moved it to October of 21. So it, it moved a bunch of times. Originally though, before the whole April 2020, it was supposed to be February of 2020. So I don't, I don't know why they picked these like weird dates when they were so comfortable with uh, November for such a long time. But um, here we are. No Time to Die is about to open. I'm very excited. You know, I think Daniel Craig was a great James Bond. Um, his movies were hit or miss, but his performances were good. Uh, but his movies aren't horrible, the, the, the misses. You know, he had, you know, he's great in odd numbers. You know, one, three, and apparently five is pretty good. Not as good as the other two that I mentioned, but two and four are the uh, big disappointments. Uh, it's hard to say whether it's Quantum or Spectre. I think Spectre is the bigger disappointment because of the whole Blofeld storyline. But uh, let's get into it. So, uh, 2005, we saw the big announcement. Daniel Craig was playing James Bond. I remember seeing it on the news. He was on the, the River Thames, coming up on the boat with the uh, the Navy, and uh, his hair was longer. And I remember the first like photograph they had of him holding the gun, and his hair his hair was still long. Uh, they must have taken a photo like a day or two later, uh, but his hair was not that long in the actual movie. But it was a good concept of, of him as James Bond, like the first behind the scenes photo. And um, the first uh, teaser trailer for the movie, Casino Royale, his first Bond movie, premiered on 35mm prints of The Da Vinci Code in May of 2006. Fast forward a few months uh, later, September, the theatrical trailer came out. Um, you know, the movie looks promising. And then November rolls around, and uh, the movie theater that I'm working at, Movie Land, now here's a weird little thing. There were two movie theaters in the parking lot. I'm sure some of you know this story. There was Movie Land, where I worked at, and there was Clearview Cinemas. Um, but for but the way it worked, we got some of the studios and they got the other handful of studios. We got mostly, at the time, the bigger ones, the Warner Brothers, the Universal, the Paramount, the Sony. Um, Fox was split between the two, but um, uh, we never got MGM. So when I was working at Movieland in 2002, we didn't get Dying of the Day. We played all the trailers, but we didn't get the movie. But then 2006 rolls around, Casino Royale, and uh, because Sony was in partnership with MGM, Movieland got uh, Casino Royale. And all the posters were, were designed by, you know, the same company that Sony uses. You know, the, 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 the teaser poster, the theatrical, was all glossy and shiny. And, um, you know, all, the, all the, the, the labels on the trailers were all like Sony. So we got the movie. I built it up. And it was, it was long. It was like maybe seven or eight reels. Um, really long movie. And it was a great movie. 
and I remember how it opened up. I compared it to um, a movie that came out a year prior called Batman Begins, which was Christopher Nolan's, you know, Batman movie, and they both had very similar openings where uh, the box office was pretty modest. Um, it didn't draw in a huge crowd, but the the critical acclaim for these films were, were off the charts, huge. And I remember. Uh, after Craig signed on to be Bond, a lot of people were kind of making fun of him. Something about the, the first blonde hair, blue-eyed Bond, and I was like, blonde hair? I don't know about that. I mean, Roger Moore had blonde hair. Uh, but there was just a lot of downplaying on him, if he could do it or not, I don't know. But I do remember him from Tomb Raider and Road to Perdition, you know, Layer Cake. So I was very kind of familiar with him. Uh, little bonus, he's actually in the seventh season of Tales from the Crypt. Uh, that was a production. He moved from LA to London, and he's in one of the episodes in the seventh season. So uh, it's good, good part. He's a great actor. But we had Casino Royale, and it opened up modestly, and uh, we had it for 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 a, a normal run, four or five, six weeks. And uh, you know the reception was very good. The movie was great. The villains were good. The directing, the action, all awesome. I think it was the same guy that directed Goldeneye, but. Um, I actually have here uh, two 35mm trailers I kept for Casino Royale. This is a teaser trailer, the flat version. Da Vinci Code that it premiered on was scope, but this is a flat version. I, I had an, a flat one. I threw out that scope one. I should have kept it, but whatever. But I ran this trailer. It's in great condition. Uh, it's on my YouTube channel if you want to see it. Casino Royale 007 flat. Now here's the uh, theatrical trailer, you see right there, difference in size, the label's kind of messed up. If you can read that, it says Casino Royale, Scope, Columbia Pictures, pretty cool. Also from Casino Royale, I have this um, uh, projectionist letter that came with the film. Uh, it's really cool. It's got the movie and all the trailers that are attached. I held on to that for a long time. Projectionist, please note. Casino Royale, and you got the trailers, Spider-Man 3, Pursuit of Happiness, and then there's other enclosed trailers, Apocalypto, Aragon, Rocky, Balboa, Dreamgirls, We Are Marshall, and The Good Shepherd. It's really cool collecting these things. You know, so I'm glad I held on to it. I wish I held on to Quantum and Skyfall, but I didn't, so. Well, Skyfall would have been an ingest letter. Exciting. Uh, running Casino Royale. That was the first James Bond movie I ever ran on 35 millimeter film, and it was a good one. It's one of the good ones. So, moving on to 2008, two years later, uh, Quantum of Solace was coming out, and the teaser trailer for that premiered on a movie called Hancock, and then the theatrical trailer premiered like a month later, um, later in the summer towards the end and uh, you know this was the Bond movie that everybody was hyping up this was gonna be like the biggest thing you know bigger than Casino Royale looked really cool and I remember reading the movie was like really short and it picks up right after uh, uh, Casino Royale like five minutes after or something like that and I was like okay that's pretty cool they never really did that in a Bond movie before uh, I, I think they connected some of the Bond movies, but it was always like a vague connection, but this was like the first direct sequel to a Bond film. And uh, and we got the print. Now, whereas Casino Royale at Movie Land, we had one print at Movie Land for Quantum, we had two prints because, you know, Daniel Craig got a great reception, you know. They were really hyping this movie up to make a lot of money. And I was also working at New Rock at the time. So I, I played this movie at New Rochelle and at Movie Land. And I remember building up the prints at Movie Land. And um, we had two prints and it was five reels. I made a video about Quantum just like when I first started do doing these projection vlogs. But I made a video of Quantum and you know I, I do remember like building it up. It was five reels, like it was really short. I was like, wow, five reels, this is such a short movie, you know? And usually when a movie this ambitious is very, very short, it does raise a lot of questions. You know, you look in the past for a lot of 
you know, movies that were promised to be big, but you know, whenever they were short, it, it's usually not a good sign. That just means that there's just, they didn't pack enough in there. For some reason, it just was short. And, um, and then we played it, and it was huge. It did much bigger numbers than Casino Royale. Every show was sold out, you know, but unfortunately the movie was obviously kind of weak. You know, we all know what, you know, what the end result was. I was kind of a fan of it for a little while, but then I was like, man, this movie sucks. And it turns out that they made this movie during a writer's strike and they couldn't get writers. And, you know, Daniel Craig and the director kind of had to write the movies that went along. That's why it was just like all these action sequences put together by like these little shitty plots. But, um, but I do have trailers for that. I actually have three trailers for Quantum. I have the teaser, but it's on a uh, trailer reel at work. Uh, but I do have the theatrical trailers. Um, which, these are good trailers, by the way. Um, the Quantum and Casino Royale ones so far. Here's one with made with a made label, Quantum of Solus Scope, 007. Look at that. And this is one with the Sony label. Now this one's not damaged, but it's kind of faded. But maybe you can see it. Yeah, you can slightly see it. Quantum of Solace. Sony. All right, so Quantum came out, made all that money, but uh, it kind of disappointed many years later. Um, I mean, it kind of disappointed from the first one, sorry. Uh, but then a few years later, uh, four years later, jumped to Skyfall. Now, I was at New Rock full time for, for Skyfall. Um, and by that time, we went digital in 2010. You know, the IMAX went digital in 2011, and right before Skyfall, a few months before, I did run IMAX film only for Dark Knight Rises because, you know, Nolan started that in a post-digital world. He started, like, running all this, like, IMAX film um, everywhere. So, um, just for him. And then after his run of Dark Knight Rises, uh, they would go back to digital. And, um, you know, Skyfall came out and it was the first, um, I wouldn't say the first IMAX shot Bond movie, but it was the first Bond movie to get an IMAX branding release. It was the first one to get the DMR blow up and it was the first Bond movie with IMAX attached to its logo. <laughs> So, um, you know, that, that, that was a pretty big deal, you know, for, for Bond fans, um, you know, to have it in IMAX. And, I, and the movie wasn't shot with IMAX. I think the whole movie was shot digital, but, but, but uh, they shot, I think, certain scenes in, in, a, in a flat aspect ratio. From, I'm trying to remember seeing it on the IMAX because the ratios did change. But, um, uh, yeah, it, it was really cool. And we got it at New Rock and it was digital, so I had to ingest it in, in all the regular theaters and the IMAX theaters. It was two separate hard drives. I'm trying to remember if it was a satellite download for the, uh, for the regular theaters, because that's like the thing now. You get a satellite download for like these big Hollywood blockbusters, but IMAX always sent a phantom drive. And uh, I built it up, ingested it, transferred all the SPLs everywhere, and uh, we were busy. It didn't matter how bad the last movie was, people went to see this, but I think word of mouth from the critics, uh, I think the villain played a factor into it, and it just looked like a really cool Bond movie. And I remember, you know, the teaser trailer for <clears throat> Skyfall premiered on Men in Black 3, and then the theatrical trailer, I think, premiered sometime in September, or maybe late, late August. But, um, you know, they're great trailers. And then we got the movie, it was huge. We had it <clears throat> at New Rock, we had it maybe like seven screens plus the IMAX. Um, and it became like, you know, the highest grossing Bond movie ever made. I think it was a billion dollars, it grossed a little over a billion dollars. But um, I have some trailers. Luckily, I was able to acquire um, from you know, from my years being a projectionist, but I was able to get a hold of Skyfall 35 millimeter trailers. I never thought I would ever have Skyfall trailers, but I haven't opened this one. 
Um, but I think I think this is the teaser. It says teaser. I'm not too sure, but I'll, I'll assume it's the teaser. But that's the label that's on that Skyfall. Yeah, this one was. I, you know, I got it as a teaser. That's what the person told me. Now, this is an international trailer for Skyfall that I got. I got this from Australia. Um, and it's a flat version because I, I heard overseas that uh, outside of America, all movie trailers are flat. But the movies are their respective aspect ratios. But that's the label that I made for this one. Um, put my name on it and everything. Skyfall 007 flat trailer. All right. Now I have the theatrical trailer with the label, but the label is damaged by tape. I'll show you right there. You see it, right? Skyfall. So all these Sony labels are either damaged or they're faded, but on the back, there's a secondary label and it tells me tells the, the projection is where to program this trailer Skyfall number two with looper so I'm assuming this premiered on looper um, but look at that that's pretty cool yeah uh, scope Skyfall trailer and it's Roger Deakins who shot this you know so I said that I ran this in digital IMAX but I actually acquired um, some IMAX film for this movie Let's move this over here. So I have, I was able to, there was a junk print of, of Skyfall, um, and I was able to get pieces of it because it was garbage, it was gonna go in the trash, but I wanted a piece of James Bond and IMAX, so I have the soundtrack to Skyfall, the audio uh, track for the film itself. Uh, which aligns with IMAX films. I've, you, you've all seen videos of me talking about this or just like, you know, setting it up. But here you go. Skyfall soundtrack, IMAX. And it was issued 10, 12, 12, right before the movie. And you get the, you know, in the, in the disc, IMAX, and in the back, Skyfall, print number 16. So it goes to show you there weren't too many IMAX prints. I have here, which is really cool. I have the end gun barrel sequence, you know, followed by the 50 years. I mean, it's just so much to unravel, but I'll show you, you get the point. That's pretty cool. Move out of the way. And you see the blood coming down and all that. That's pretty dope. IMAX 70 millimeter film, but not shot with IMAX 70 millimeter film. So. I also have um, a lot of these, but I framed it up just for this. The Skyfall uh, poster, IMAX poster with uh, him on the uh, floor shooting the gun. November 9th in IMAX. I have loads of these posters um, of the Skyfall ones. And I think I have a copy of the teaser poster too. Unfortunately, these weren't great posters, the Daniel Craig ones. Um, they just, there's nothing special about them. But I also have a poster, the teaser poster for Casino Royale, the theatrical for Casino Royale. I have the theatrical for Quantum. I didn't keep the teaser. I left New Rock. We had the advertisements for Spectre. Uh, out the teaser poster and the trailer but I left New Rock in May of 2015 I took like a summer off to do some other things and then I went back into the movie theater industry but at a different capacity I, I started working at an Alamo draft house and I got a job entry-level job as a server serving tables uh, because that's kind of what I was doing on the side and I was like oh let me work at this Alamo draft house you know and um, I started working at Alamo Draft House like a week or so after Spectre came out. So when I was, I didn't play it. I had no, nothing to do with the digital or, or any projection, but I worked in the theater for Skyfall, I mean for Spectre, um, serving tables. <laughs>
So it was kind of weird. Like I was like, I ran the first three Bond movies as a projectionist on film and digital and IMAX, and here I am serving tables at an Alamo Draft House for Spectre. You know, like what a real bummer that was. Um, no disrespect to servers. I mean, it's it's a, it's an incredible job, but it's not like a job you want forever. Um, but I did it. So we had Spectre. I caught the tail end of it. You know, it kind of looked like it died out quick. And I remember it opened up pretty big. And um, um, but it just kind of fell short of of the billion dollars at Skyfall. And I know a lot of people were kind of disappointed with it. But I don't have any film trailers for it. I have a poster in storage somewhere. But um, but now moving on to No Time to Die. Um, you know, I'm excited that this is coming out. I am actually back at the Alamo Draft House, the same theater that I was working at, but now I'm a projectionist. And I'm gonna, I've am gonna. i been all week setting up this movie. Uh, it's been coming in, I've been building up the SPLs, moving it around to where it needs to be. Uh, you know, I gotta set up the pre-shows, all that stuff, just, you know, just for this movie. And it's really exciting because this is like one of the big features in 2020 that got canceled. I mean, I mean, postponed. This was the first feature in 2020. Right a day before the shutdown, they were like, all right, No Time to Die is canceled. And then everybody else started following suit. Um, it was like March 12th, 2020. And I remember I bought tickets to AMC Lincoln Square to go to the Bond Marathon for the Craig movies. And it was like two... <laughs> Two days before, but then AMC pulled it off, and they're like, "Oh, we're canceling this," and you know, I guess a huge announcement, and that's what it was. Um, so I waited a long time, like 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 the whole planet, to see this movie, you know. But it's good to be upstairs in a projection booth. Um, as you all know, I've been working during the pandemic at a drive-in. I was a technical director at Sag Harbor and the IMAX Maritime Aquarium, and here I am for this movie. Um, but I do have. The, the, the first teaser poster for No Time to Die that says April 2020 and it's that that kind of bland picture of him in his like action suit you know with the gun and it has like you know turquoise in the background 007 on, on kind of like a goldish wall um, <clears throat> and I do have an ingest letter for No Time to Die um, you know so uh, which I saved on my laptop so so I collect all that stuff, you know, you gotta preserve it. But real quick, I do have trailers from other Bond movies. I have before Casino Royale, I'm gonna start backwards here. I got No Time, uh, Die Another Day, the Pierce Brosnan theatrical trailer. Look at that. And you see it's not Sony, it's uh, MGM. And then I got The World Is Not Enough teaser trailer. And they put Bond 19 on there. I like that. Well, there's not enough. Let's see? And then they put on the, the theatrical trailer for The World Is Not Enough Bond, James Bond. That's really cool. Let's see here. I got. I got a teaser. One of my favorite teasers is Tomorrow Never Dies, where he's like. Bond, you know the rest. Pretty cool, huh? Theatrical trailer. Cool. I have the teaser trailer for Goldeneye, which I did see in the theaters on Batman Forever in the summer of 1995. Not this physical trailer, but look at that. And I got the theatrical one. It's cool having these. And I got two more. One is here, and the other one is on a trailer reel I had prepped up at work. You know, I run all these old trailers from time to time, and the one that you know, I mentioned I had the, a Quantum of Solace teaser trailer on that reel, but I also have a theatrical trailer for Moonraker that I got. It's all red and stuff, but it, everything else is clear other than the fact that it's a red trailer. 
Uh, but I also ran this one, and this is one of my favorite Bond trailers for one of my favorite Bond movies. Very underrated. Good villain portrayed by Robert Davi. Um, this is License to Kill. And this is the, the, the teaser trailer for License to Kill where he has the watch and like it's counting down and they're playing the Michael Kamen music. It's really, really cool. So, all right, everyone. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm just as much ex as excited about No Time to Die as all of you. Um, I'm gonna miss Daniel Craig. He was a, <coughs> excuse me, he was a great Bond. You know, tough and and dark, and and he brought some sophistication to the character. I think he contributed some depth to it and and made it into a, a more complex, interesting character. You know, so he really got some good input into it. And uh, it was great to be a part of this Bond franchise, you know, um, uh, especially during his tenure and growing up. You know, Pierce Brosnan will always be my Bond. I grew up with him, you know. Um, you know, if I grew up in the 60s, it'd be Sean Connery. If I grew up in the 70s, it'd be Roger Moore. But uh, I, I grew up in the 90s. And, and you know, I, I slightly remember as a little little kid, one of my early memories is Timothy Dalton, but, but I grew up with Brosnan. He was my Bond. Um, but uh, it was a pleasure to run 35 millimeter films of his bonds and to play the digital versions of them and just be in the theater for his his bonds, uh, which have have grown, uh, you know, theatrically and financially and, and critically, you know, despite the quantum and the specter, but they're not like horrible movies, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah. So, it was an honor and a pleasure, Mr. Craig. So, alright everybody, uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to see more videos just like this. Thanks again everybody, and enjoy No Time to Die. Later, bye.